Hi, today's July 16th. We're in Los Padres National Forest at La Panza Campground. I'm going to take you on a hike down to check out our native California plants, like our coast live oak trees, lots of other trees and shrubs. So first up here, this really tall oak tree. Here's another one here. This is a coast live oak. It's Quercus agrifolia. You kind of know him by his leaves here. These are uh, little ovate shaped. They're very toothed. See how toothy that is? And they're curved kind of like this shape here. Hey, so here, it's an acorn. Here's a little cup he sits in. A little green acorn. It's like somebody opened him up, ate all the yummy, mushy stuff. This pine tree here is a coulter pine. Pinus coulteri or coulteri. He's real common out here. He's known as a widow maker because his pine cones are so huge. Let me see if I find a pine cone. There's a squashed one. Now this pine cone here is a little pine cone. Right here. It's called a widow maker because it'll uh, fall on your head turn your wife into a widow. So this super common shrub defines the hillsides outside of our little oak woodlands here as it goes up. This is our chamis, Adenostoma fasciculatum. It's going to fasciculatum like our buckwheat, Aragonum fasciculatum. These grow in fascicles, our clusters. That's how you got fasciculatum. Okay, this road is very popular for uh, bikers. OHV, so be careful. Anyway, it's also called a grease wood. It's very greasy stems and he loves fires and that's how he propagates. So this place is super dry, I mentioned. One of the things that keeps it going there's a soil here. This is all mud and silt. See how muddy that is? It just crumbles in my hand. And the good thing about mud and silt, this has been laid down hundreds of millions of years ago. This is all underwater. So the mud and the silt, it's really good at retaining moisture. So when it rains, you know, a couple months of the year, all the water is retained. Helps these plants grow or survive during the summer. So this guy here, of course, he's a western sycamore. So he's native out here to the west coast. There's another one. Looks like he had a little damage, but he's coming back. So what you see in your shopping center, you usually find what's called an American sycamore. They come from the east coast. They're easier to grow and maintain they're less uh, shrubby at the base. They got a higher, a higher trunk that goes more straight up. So there's our sycamore here. He's got these palmate leaves, but he's got long lobes. The American sycamores have shorter lobes. He's got this beautiful white bark. Peels off. Okay. You see how he's. Got all these roots that come up and roots and more. This is one tree. So if you put this in a shopping center, it gets all mangled and mushy. That's why they use American sycamores. This shrub over here, this is a coffee berry. Frangula californica. He's native to western United States, California down to Baja. You find him out here in our oak woodlands and chaparral. The leaves here, they're lance-shaped, light green on the bottom, darker on top. The branches and stems, they have a reddish tinge, and the new twigs, they're usually red in color. And they bloom from May to June. The little berries here are called droops, usually green, red, or black. And the birds and animals, like the black bears or the mule deer, they love to eat the leaves and the fruits. And this shrub grows about three feet tall, maybe even a small tree up to 12 feet tall. It can live up to 100, even 200 years old. 
So watch out for your poison oak, Toxicodendrum diversilobum. Most of the time they're really dry, purple-like. This guy here is super green and waxy. Look how oily and waxy these leaves are. Now I shouldn't touch them, but that's okay. And his leaves, they come in the usual pattern of three. You got one, two, three leaves. Shorter sides and longer in the center. And this guy grows really wild up here. Check out this guy here. This is our fragrant sumac, Rus aromatica. You find him throughout the entire United States. He grows two to five feet tall. And you recognize him by these three leaves. They kind of look like poison oak. And the stems are brownish gray. They're thin and flexible. And the leaves, there's this three leaf pattern. They're lobed looking. And they'll turn reddish in the fall. Over here, so this is our California milkweed. Asclepias californica. It's fuzzy glauca colored leaves. Cluster of flowers. But over here, check this out. This is a tranchical hawk. He's a black spider wasp, about two inches long with super bright orange wings. He likes to hunt down burrowing spiders, especially tarantulas. It's the state insect of New Mexico. So watch out for this little prickly weed over here. This guy's called a yellow star thistle. Centauria. Sostitialis. It's also called a golden star thistle. He's an Asteraceae, comes from the Mediterranean, and he's super invasive around the world. The stems are sort of thin, and the flowers have this huge collection of spines and needles. He's an aster, which means this uh, little flower here is really many, many flowers in one. And some have dried up here on the top as well. Now this clump over here, a really tall stick-like plant with flowers. The flowers grow on the stem. This is called naked buckwheat, Aragonum nudum. So here's a good example of the different colors, right? So it's got this uh, little spiral of little floret of leaves. They all start at the base. And they shoot up these stems. The stems separate and the more stems. And at the top, you get these little flowers that form as they move up the stem. So it's not a uh, like an inflorescence at the top. They keep blooming as they move higher. So here, so we got one there, one there. We at the very top, we got these pretty little cluster of flowers here. Okay, and the stems, we got purple ones. Okay, right here, which are older. And we got the green ones, which are newer. And uh, this one's got, this is a nice fresh one. We got some great little flowers here. See how fresh they are. Look at that little cluster of bushy flowers. Here, two together as they grow up the stem. Along the trail here, we have another shrubby plant. This is jojoba, Sanansia chinensis, also known as goat nut, deer nut, sometimes even a coffee berry. He's got these little leaves here, ovately shaped, soft, light green, really soft bark on the stems. He peels off to reveal green underneath. And uh, the base here, it shoots off multiple stems from the burl. It gets really shrubby and messy. And this jojoba is the same plant that gives us jojoba oil. Cool, check this out. We got a little beetle here hanging out on our narrow leaf milkweed. And this guy, he's called a milkweed bug. Comes from the genus Oncopellus. Now he lives all over North America. Lots of different colors and patterns, orange and black. He loves to eat off our milkweeds. He's got a really long proboscis. He's known as a piercing, sucking insect. So here's a new guy. This plant over here, he's a wavy leaf thistle. 
Circium undulatum. Here's some older flowers. This here's a nice new one. It's very prickly, little purple flower. Key prickly. It turns a little purple flower. Okay. Here goes his seed here. He's got big white fluffy seeds that will blow away in the wind. Look how prickly he is. So he's prickly up the stem and he's prickly and sticky on the flowers. Down here is just a mangled guy here. You don't want to step on him. Right next to him. And next to him here, this is a called a brown foot. A Cortia ridei, or Cortia ridei. He grows pretty wild up here. So first of all, he's got this uh, array of flowers on top, a little cluster. He's got little purple flowers on the inside. See those little, little stamen? Anthers, pollen, sticking up there. Little reproductive parts. What's most interesting about this guy, though, are the leaves. He's got no petioles. So the leaves, they wrap around the stem. How about that? Like these petioles. See how they do that? They just wrap around the stem like it's hugging it. He sends out another little stem here. And the leaves, they just wrap around. So that's kind of cool. You don't see that a lot. So here's some more of our buckwheat. Up here, I want to show you the close-up of our Lord's candle. What she looks like. She's all kind of said and done. So we have our plant here. It's got these long blades or spears. You can even call them daggers, right? Like Spanish dagger. That's kind of a nickname for all of our agaves and yuccas that have these spear-like structures. He's a little bit serrated, like a little sawtooth on the edges. So he's gonna cut you on the edges, and this is super, super pointy. He'll spike you in the eyeball. But he's ready to sprout. Oh, shoot, look at that. Got it right in my thumb. Anyway, he'll sprout this big, long shoot. Comes all the way up to the top. Okay, he's all done. He's got these flower buds that'll bloom, drop their seeds. So it's called Lord's Candle. And they only bloom one time in their life and then they die. But that's okay because they make a lot of young ones that come back up. What else do we have here? Might be kind of fun. Uh, we'll find another guy. So here we got another oak tree gall. Let's see if I can reach it. Oh, there we go. It looks like a fruit. Like you almost want to eat it, but don't eat this thing. This thing's brand new. We open them up. What are we going to get? See, oh, I don't even know what's going on in there. Sometimes you find a, maybe you'll find a wasp or something comes out. Yuck. I should have done that. That's, my hands are all juicy. Okay. Go down the trail here. We're gonna find some new plants to amaze us. So, hope you guys are having fun. Here we go. Here's another roadside plant. I think, I think this is tumble mustard. It's a Cymbrium altissimum. Okay, now he's super green. And he comes from a single stem. And he branches out. Once again, a little purple, like all of our guys. And the uh, leaves here, they're in bundles, like a fascicle, right? And he branches again, and he gets to the top. Let's see if we find some flowers on this guy. Uh, no flowers. There's another one here. But really short leaves, though, they come out in bundles got this little pattern. He's got a long leaf here and a little tiny bundle. Long leaf, tiny bundle, long leaf, tiny bundle. That's how this guy works. Let's see. Okay, we got one here. A little older. 
I'm going to top it all up. So here's a very special treat. We have a manzanita from the genus Arctostaphylus. We have to decide, is this an eastward manzanita or an Arctostaphylus glandulosa? Or is it a big berry manzanita, Arctostaphylus glauca? Okay, and there's a couple ways to find out. One is the Eastwood manzanita is very hairy. And the big berry is not. So this guy does not have hairs on his stems. And his leaves here, they're ovate and they're a tiny, tiny bit fuzzy. But he's not hairy. All right. So he looks to me like a big berry manzanita. Another way to tell, look at the base here. Okay, if it has a, like a big burl, uh, you can't really tell here. If it has a big burl on it, then that's our Eastwood glandulosa. But I don't see a big burl here. So it's telling me it's a big berry, but that's really not a really good indicator. We want to find this fruit. The big berry obviously has bigger fruits on him. There's some fruits up here. There's a little fruit. These things. These are pretty big. There we go. It's like a apple. Manzanita, right? Means apple. He's really sticky. So this guy. There's another apples right up here. No flowers though. This guy here, he's a big berry manzanita, Arctostaphylus glauca, of course glauca. So now we're going to head up the trail here, it's called the La Panza Bypass. One and a half miles, it goes up here, all through our chamise. Here's another one of our soft, fuzzy California milkweed plants. But here we have a new plant. This is California fuchsia, Epilobium canum. So he even looks like a fuchsia, but he's not a true fuchsia from the Caribbean. He's got this tubular trumpet-shaped flower. It's bright, scarlet color, blooms in summer and fall, and he's perfectly shaped for hummingbirds. And inside, so you get all the pollen moving along, the stamen, the anther, all the ovaries. Cute little flower. There's another one here. Okay, and the leaves. They work themselves up the stem. Here, 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 here. Kind of until they get to the top. And they're tiny, tiny leaves. Because they got to be tiny to make sure they don't lose a lot of water. Oh, here we go. Got some more up here. Very cute. I'm going to save this flower. We walk up here, we got more of our beautiful little soft plants. We got lots and lots of mud. See all this mud here? It's all retaining all that beautiful moisture for these plants. Like our chemise here. This is really healthy. It looks fantastic. This shrub here is called Mountain Mahogany. It's from the genus Circocarpus. has these little scallop-shaped leaves. And leaves on the bottom. A little pattern here. So these leaves, they alternate up the stem. One here, one here, one here, one here, one here. It's got this grayish bark. Underneath it's more white. You can see he's very stick-like. He's firm. Okay, he's super firm. You can break him. Almost looks like little clam shells. Here's another one of our oaks. Lots of grasses. Lots and lots of oaks. The hillside. It's really dry. This is burn country. It's ready to go. 
another one of our Coulter Pines. All these oaks all up on the hill here. Now here's our very common holly leaf cherry, Prunus elicifolia. Lots of red, delicious berries for our little birds. They're red, they're yellow. Got these little holly leaves. They're serrated, little oval shaped. Right, super branched, very sticky. You know, look at that, serrated. That's a good looking example. Let's see here, come back a little bit. Look how well, look how well shaped he is. Almost like somebody came out here and uh, manicured him. So here's a little oak. Oops. He's coming in. There's a bigger oak. Might be the mother, the parent. More oaks. So they're all Quercus, right? But it's so hard to identify if they're Quercus agrifolia, Quercus dumosa, the Burberry oak. This looks like a uh, Dumosa. Okay, little scrub oak we have here. But they hybridize together so much. It's always hard to tell who's who out here in this oak world. So I'm just gonna call them all Quercus from now on. So out here, these are all dirt bike riding trails. You get your dirt bike, you cruise down, you go over jump. Come down here, it's a jump, and you cruise down. But we're walking today. Here we got some spider webs in the ground here. And these look like tarantula spider webs. There's a little hole right there. There's a better hole. Oh, it's got a little web over it. There's a better hole right there. I don't know, could be any spider. Who knows? And here we have another tarantula hawk. He's dining on this cluster of flowers from our narrow leaf milkweed. Hey, take a look at this little soft growing weed out in our disturbed area here. And the bees love it. He's called a vinegar weed, Trichostoma lanceolatum. He's got these little purple flowers, super smooth, soft. Lance-shaped leaves, sort of fuzzy. He get he gets his name here, vinegar weed, from all the oils which have a strong vinegar odor. In the oils, they actually kill other plants. You find this vinegar weed growing all along from Oregon down to Baja, California. So we're about a mile up the trail. I'm not really sure where it goes to, so we're gonna head back and finish our video here. Thank you for watching. This is absolutely phenomenal place to come up to. Wow. Oaks, pines, chamise, manzanitas. So if you come in springtime, you get more flowers. There's no flowers here. Just start surviving shrubs and plants that can make it through the summertime. So you get out here, one last look at our beautiful chamise. Ananostoma fasciculatum. Got brown little flowers. These are all done, they're going to seed. But the seeds are kind of worthless. They don't re-sprout. Most of them are sterile. This guy's super healthy. Look at this uh, root base. We'd love it if we had a fire, wipe this all out. You can re-sprout and grow. So, there you go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.